Oh, wait, I gotta get my rest of my props. Oh, we have props? I do. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, see, now you're drinking tonight. I drink every week, thanks to you. <laughs> well, I have to admit that I went back and watched a couple of these that we've done. And I get kind of maybe hammered by the end of some of these. So. Well, you can't tell. Only you would notice because I because you carry it well. Well, you're, my... <laughs> you're a good drunk. You're a functioning <laughs> drunk, so you're good. <laughs> well, I kind of noticed it because my son said to me the other day, he goes, oh, you know, I'll be there Thursday. He goes, oh, are you doing the thing with the darlings? And I said, yeah. He goes, oh, okay, I'll come by the end of it because by then you'll be kind of hammered and we'll go out and have fun. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, did your wife make it home yet? Did yes, she, she did. Keep an eye on you. <laughs> Whip you back so, into shape. She probably so said, what did you get done? I'll be sipping tea tonight. Really? Just tea? <laughs> Oh, that's boring, especially for this movie. I can't believe it. I got popcorn, popcorn, yes. Now, as as, as a disclaimer, oh I must say that Ginger was not too sure about doing this one tonight. Ginger no, was still... not sure at all. She's still not a big fan. Darby overrode me. I wanted to do The Fall Guy. That's a great well, episode of The Fall Guy. You can't <laughs> use words like overrid you in, you know, 2021, okay? Be careful. <laughs> I'm not even go there. My parents might actually be on here tonight, so I gotta really. Keep... Oh, you brought them oh, on. My mother for... is on here. Hey, mom. Oh. <laughs> They're back in Vermont. So you brought them on for this one, right? The, I know. A, well, she kept these. saying, "Send her the link." I sent her the link. I gave her the warning. <laughs> she still okay. signed on because my mom loves me. <laughs> well, so here's why we're doing. I found the pictures. And then I didn't really remember. I almost thought this was Bless the Beast and the Children, but then I remembered that was Billy Moomy that got that. Um, so all of a sudden, thanks to all this technology and stuff, I could go back and actually see this. And some of the, and I got to admit with John Derrick, because people corrected me on Facebook when I said, you know, like his ex wife, and oh no, that was his widow. He stayed married to her and all. I'm, I'm going to show what a bad guy I am. I didn't even know his acting that much. You know, I knew he was a director and he was married to Bo and Linda Evans and, you know, and all. But I didn't realize that I had done a movie with him. And not only had I done a movie, but my dad had a small part in The Ten Commandments, oh, which right. he was also in. So we both worked with John Derrick before. And it's just funny. I... I somehow get the feeling I'm not sure that my mom was not a big fan because she never said, oh, yeah. And, and usually she would have at that kind of a thing. I don't think she got to see Bolero come out or I know she wouldn't have been a fan. <laughs> well, did you know anything? I mean, do you remember anything about your audition for this movie? Oh, heck no. No, you just remember no, I... showing up on the set and that was it? Because I'm going to ask you what it was like to work with Mark Lawrence. Do you remember the director at all? Is, hold on, I think I might have, is this who we're talking about here? Because apparently Mark Lawrence, who's the director of this picture, has done like over 400 things. As He's only directed two things, this movie and another movie that's called, and I don't know if we should use it as our trivia question, because it had like multiple names and it's distributed by Troma. So if that gives you any idea, and Lloyd Coffin, where what his other movie was but he if when i looked him up he's been in everything he was in like two riflemen he was in he was in a couple of bond movies he was i mean his list he's a gangster in fact i think i have a picture of him i have to change my glasses just so everybody knows my <laughs> theme tonight is i thought it was nightmare is the sun not nightmare in the sun because i'm not a sun person i'm a mountain person <laughs> You live in Florida and you're not a night uh, sun. Uh, I love my husband. That's why. Okay. This is a picture of Mark Lawrence. A lot of you will recognize him because he did a ton of gangster movies and he's known for doing gangster parts, apparently. Oh, where'd it go? Uh, here he is. So that's Mark Lawrence. That's the director. Oh, yeah. I think he did some boons or a boon. No, he did not. I checked to see so we could at least say, but... Um, our only tie-in, <laughs> of course, to uh, the, to Daniel Boone is that Keenan Wynn is in this, and Ed Wynn was his dad, 
And of course, we know Hannibal the Goose has a voice that sounds like Edwin. So that was the best I could do on a stretch of how we, oh, and that you're in this movie. So there you are. <laughs> yeah, well, there's that. I mean, there, there's that I a minute, but you know, besides that, we'll, we'll go through the goose. Yeah, that's. Uh... <laughs> I almost talked Hannibal into making an appearance, but. <laughs> no, I have a feeling that between the series and how young I started and how long I've been doing it, I could probably beat Kevin Bacon on, you know, how many degrees of separation to an actor. Because, I mean, come on, I worked with Flipper. That's got to be. Although, perhaps your tree goes a little separate than Kevin Bacon's when this way or that way. <laughs> I'm uh, not sure. I do not know. But the uh, interesting thing why... about this movie I found out is that you actually shot it in 1963. September right. of 63. Uh, apparently it was financed by Ricky DuPont, the son of the DuPont Foundation or the big famous DuPont people who wanted credit as the investor and Lauren, Mark Lawrence said no way because he called in a whole bunch of favors on this one and didn't want everybody finding out that some millionaire had, <laughs> had financed the film because then they'd all be like, well, where's my money? Because I, I, Sammy Davis Jr.'s in this quickly, it was a favor. Um, who is the other one that's in it? Robert Duvall's in here somewhere, as oh. I guess was a favor. Um, All uh, these guys, I mean. Yeah, the, but the, they did it as a favor to Mark because he was directing this. So that, I thought that was kind of interesting. But then he read- And I it. read, because I did my history now as you're teaching me to do. I read <laughs> that John had uh, okayed that his wife in this, love her slanders, would do a nude scene. Uh, with the sheriff and then the day before shooting it no I don't think that's gonna happen. no it was supposed to be with her husband isn't her husband Aldo Ray who's playing her no husband? no 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 oh it is no, the sheriff no, no. okay good see yeah see that's what happens when you scan the movies you got to watch them they're pretty well, <laughs> well no but they no. also gave him a co-producer title because he agreed to do that as far as she was gonna so what are you drinking season. tonight just beer plain old Bud Light I, well, I I got my popcorn, maybe. <laughs> and your tea. That's well, hysterical. the tea's just about gone. I'm gonna might have to get something. <laughs> well, out. the first segment's 44 minutes long, so I think you'll have time. <laughs> Are we just gonna break in the middle and then go to the end? Yes, we'll have a take a break in the middle. We'll chat a little bit and then we'll move on. But um, and, I also want I'll, I have, to, I'll have to come up with some interesting things to say, or Ginger's not gonna let me pick the movies anymore. Well, no. <laughs> It's your show, Darby. I was reminded it's your show, baby. I'm just here making the technical sides. But I wanted to also let my got my girl Stacy Schaefer know that Mark Lawrence was also in Child of Our Time, the Playhouse 90 that Bobby Crawford got the Emmy nomination for. He didn't actually have a named character, but apparently he's in there somewhere. And which I see, was interesting. There's another tie-in. That's where I got my start was on Playhouse 90. Oh, well then there you go. And apparently Mark Lawrence had been blacklisted in the 1950s as a communist because he claimed that he went to a party. So a friend invited him to a party because he told him he'd get girls and that's the only time, but then they booted him. He got blacklisted and headed to England and then he came back in the 60s apparently. And then he started directing television. So he did a bunch of like Western television shows and then directed these two movies and then went back to acting, so. And I gotta say that this this gentleman here, if I'm clicking right, you know, I always remember him just from the comedies and a lot of Disney and, you know, stuff like that. And so to oh, see- Oh, Keenan Wynn? No, that's not Keenan Oh, Wynn. is that Aldo Ray? Or who's that? Which one are you looking at? Oh, good. That Walt you Disney gonna, you're sitting on? You are gonna- <laughs> Boy, these people, they were all born long before me, sorry. <laughs> there's no there's no real cowboy hats in here so ginger's like nah they, they weren't on the ponderosa they weren't on the play they weren't riding horses just all right well let's it. just get let's just get through the well, wait did you show this. everybody your little matching outfit darby dressed up special for this event well, see i noticed see. so that, that i t just tied it can you step back a, a little bit and uh <laughs> well this is because i always keep my wardrobe you know and i'm i am trying to get back to my original weight of Eight All right, I'm a little a shocked that the jacket still fits. <laughs> <laughs> I just stretched it out over the years, that's all. Is that what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh my goodness, Darby, you're crazy. Uh, let's see if there's anything else we need to know. Uh, you need to know, she's going in this with such enthusiasm. I am Anybody Brian. else excited to see this? I mean, this is this is a classic. You got Sammy Davis Jr. Robert Duvall, you know, I went and like put and Darby in because they said feature. He didn't even make the and also starring in this. Um, uh, he was, it, I'm sure he was a nobody back then, but apparently he's got a decent little part in it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's great. It's, good, it's good fun. Good fun. Well, we'll be the judge of that. <laughs> Help me. Go on the Q&A. Say you're having fun. They Ginger have fun when they see me. you. And this also, this was uh, John Derrick's second to last appearance as an actor. He did one see, more movie why. after this that he directed and acted in called Once Before I Die in 1966. And that was the last movie he acted in. And then, because he and said, I don't want to be an actor. I'd rather That's why him. I never really thought of him as an actor. I, you know, he, he, he came to my awareness uh, with Bo and the photographer. And then I heard the stories about him and all that went. So it's really surprising that I, you know, I got to act with him. I think it's, it's, uh, and I gotta say, he's got an eye for women. You know, I, I can't argue with him there, right? <laughs> well, I found out he actually had four wives. Did you know that? I know, and I looked for the earlier one too. I know Linda Evans, Patty, right? Yeah, Ursula. the ballerina. She was a ballerina, apparently. I didn't realize he was married to Linda Evans. Here, I think I have a picture of that. Hold on. Of the, we'll see if we'll let you, you all seven? be the judge. Does he have a type? It was between <laughs> seven and nine years. That's that's how long the relationships lasted. All right. So that's Ursula Andrus, who we'll see tonight, is his first one. Then Linda Evans, that you all probably know from Big Valley, and then of course Bo Derek on the right. We I didn't have Patty. Yeah, because nobody ever is. watched <laughs> Dallas or anything that she was also in. Yes, who? and Bo. Oh. Oh, and Linda Evans? She wasn't in Dallas. She was on Dynasty. Wasn't Dynasty. She? Dynasty. One of those in that one. And in doing my research for this, <laughs> like I said, that you caught me, I never saw when I came out, but I saw a trailer for uh, Bolero. I remember the controversy when it came out. Now I might have to go watch it, just as research. To uh... Is that the pornography one that Bo Derek did? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, most people filming their husband, their wives doing that would probably be arrested. But in Hollywood, you get paid for it and get a claim. But um, it was interesting. Like I said, all I saw was a trailer. Well, he did photography spreads of all three of them, I guess, in Playboy. That's so. why I thought of him as a photographer. That's... I thought you said you thought of him as a director. Make up your mind. What did you a think of him as? A, a director and a photographer. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Uh, Robin Gronimus got it right. So the other movie that Mark uh, Lawrence directed was called Pigs. Actually, the real name of it was Daddy's Deadly Darling. And it actually starred his daughter, Tony Lawrence. Mark Lawrence's daughter, Tony Lawrence, is the lead in it. And it's a very nuts <laughs> thing about a woman who's nuts and keeps killing her boyfriends and the guy and the, the farmer that she's hanging out with feeds the dead bodies to the pigs in the back and nobody can understand why they <laughs> well, <laughs> the script I was I make films. <laughs> so this guy now we know why he gave up on directing because <laughs> there is two. Uh, I, I won't this one's not bad. This was not a bad movie. But if you want to chat look, look, about it look, in look the chat. At, this is the look, only night I'll give you permission to chat in the chat where if you want to make any comments, chat look in the chat. look at his face at your comment. He's going really come on Ginger. Let's at least give this this movie a chance, okay? I will. Okay. Okay. Let's get started. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Let's see if there's any. Uh... I hope Brenda Mundrak's giving me a hard time because she thinks I should be drinking Corona. I live in Florida. I thought everybody in Florida drinks Corona. Isn't Corona? That's a. Everybody that's Key in West. California, Mexico. My nephew yeah. does every time I go to Florida. I thought it was a Florida thing. Nope. Oh. Not this Florida girls thing. <laughs> I got my popcorn, I'm ready to go. All right, Brenda Mudrack says, always have fun when watching these Darby. So we already, you already got one point for you. Uh, Christine said, always having fun, Darby. You definitely make me laugh, sending hugs to you all. But Christine's kind of biased as your administrator. So <laughs> you get half a point for that. No, I'm just kidding. Christine does a great job. <laughs> and Nancy Johnson said, we always have fun here. Pamela Riley Pavkovich, love your outfit, Darby. And Give her an update. Is her picture on its way? 
Yes, of course. <laughs> oh, you yes. got a kiss and a shout out, Pamela. There you go. So let's start. Let's start. That's the for movie free. Quick. <laughs> All right, so let me give the quick blurb. So as we said, this first segment's gonna be about 44 minutes long. We're gonna split it in half. Uh, it was directed by Mark Lawrence. It was written by George Fass, Fanya Fa Foss, who was also married to Mark Lawrence. So her name was actually Fanya Lawrence, uh, Mark Lawrence and Ted Thomas. It was mostly shot in Calabasas, California. I think somebody had mentioned that on your list anyway. Yep. So uh, like I said, it was shot in September of 63, but it wasn't released until March of 1965. So it had a little bit of a delay, I think because of the, something to do with the DuPont guy buying it and then he didn't pay for everything and Mark got it back and financial you gotta love it. Financial <laughs> problems in Hollywood, unheard of. Shocker. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it also, it stars Ursula Andress that you all will recognize from Dr. No, the Bond movie, Dr. No. And of course, John Derrick that we have already talked about which you don't recognize him because he's a director. <laughs> you recognize him as Bo Derek's husband. <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. And then, uh, so uh, questions, go ahead and post them in the Q&A. Again, since we're watching a movie, if you want to have some fun, you are welcome to chat in the chat with any interesting comments that you might have. I will probably read them, but not read them live. So, but uh, that tends to be kind of fun because this is a interesting movie. Darby it's only watched one that bad, in the last Andy, five okay? minutes of it. <laughs> It's not going to be that bad. Oh, my goodness. It was very, actually, it was very difficult to find. And the only version I could find was actually on YouTube. So it's not a great cop copy of it. But I did find Joe Dante, the famous director, Joe Dante, did a critique on it for the trailer. And all he had at the time was the trailer to work off of. But he thought so it was a great. This is the special show. events for the darlings and dudes. Here it is. Yes, it is. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, <laughs> this is Nightmare in the sun. <laughs> The usual? The usual. Sheriff around? No. Nope. Day off. Oh? Um, don't think so. Said something about going into town last night. Something wrong? Yes. What? Everything. 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 Marsha, get up. It's late. Oh, I'm going to see him back. 
bed until the carnival opens again. Come on, now. Oh, the shooting galleries, the cotton candies, and lots and lots of prizes. I don't want trouble with your husband over a bunch of dolls. It ain't worth it. Oh, poor Sam. Why did you marry the man? Oh, I liked him. And coming to America and seeing New York, Chicago, San Francisco, and all the cowboys. And I didn't see any of it. Why don't you see it with me? Why do you want everything Sam has? He doesn't know how to use his money, his wife, his... <laughs> Nobody understands me. Not Sam, not you, not anybody here. Hey, thanks for taking me off my feet. to get out for a while. Take a look at things. Hmm, I, myself, mostly. I've been gone almost a year now. I've seen most of the Orient and a, a good part of Europe. Can't say I've come up with all the answers. I did find one, though. You do have to give a little. where I turn off. Yeah, well, thanks a lot. Thanks for the lift. I can't hear you. What'd you say? I said thanks for the lift. Oh, crazy. You watch what you're doing. Yeah, I'm sorry. Where's Hogan? I don't know. I'm a stranger here. Hi, Mr. Wilton. Not a scorcher, eh? This grifter spilled water all over my car. It'll ruin the surface. It's only water, Mr. Wilson. Smart answers. Did you see my wife? Yeah. When? Last night. Gave her 12 gallons of juice and a loop job. What was the mileage on her car? Oh, I got it marked on the loop chart. Yeah, here she is. 11,122 miles. 11,122. That's right, a full house. Three bullets and a pair of deuces. Did she tell you where she was going? Said she was going into town. She was in a big hurry. Everybody's in a big hurry. Fill her up. Check under the hood and wash it. And park it in the shade. What's he mad at? The Wilson's like that all the time, very touchy. How far is it to the next town? About 65 miles, fast stretch. Maybe it's better if I hang around here until I catch a ride clear through, huh? Well, not if you know what's good for you. The sheriff don't like hitchhikers. Okay, thanks.
Hello. What are you doing here? I'm waiting for you. I, I happen to be passing by. Do you like me with the bangs or without the bangs? I like you. They're all right. Everything all right in town with Jane? Mm-hmm. You're home earlier than you said you'd be. Is Jane all right? Jane never changes. She's always the same. What'd you do, go to a show? Uh-huh. You're a liar. You're a liar. If I told you the truth, you wouldn't believe me anyhow. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but the car, it's only one mile changed on the speedometer. It's 180 miles to town and back. I won't allow you to lie to me. You're my wife, and you lied me. I feel grateful. All right, then. Feel grateful. Here we go. Thank you.
It's all ready, Mr. Wilson. Ten gallons of gas, a quart of oil. That's 420, including the watch. out of ten. Wilson passed out again. Yeah, I want you to come down and look after the station. Why, sure, I'll split the five bucks with you like last time. Yeah, you look after the station, and we'll take the car back uh, after we close. Right? Okay. She'll do. Oh, come on, Nana. I'll turn my back and you take it off. It's a present for my wife. Might as well keep those. 
I'm still coming to Los Angeles with you. No. Oh, what's going to happen to me? Well, do you really think we'd be good for each other? You go for me. If I go with you, it's different. If we... If. That's the whole trouble, if. Too many ifs. Been running away from them for a year now. Made a full circle. Now I'm going home. Where shall I go? Not too bad right here. Really it isn't. He's already dead. But if this whole place is dead, please take me somewhere nice. Mr. Wilson? Hey, Gus! Come here, quick! How do I know he ain't moved the muscle since I come in here? What are we gonna do? Sheriff's office. Huh? Repeat that, will you? Slower. Stay put, Hogan. Don't touch anything, you understand? Right. I'll be out there in about ten minutes, all right?
I should have married a guy like him. Shut up. Touch and move anything? Uh-uh. Has he said anything? He ain't moved. What time did you get here? About a half hour ago, I promised to deliver his car. Hogan drove him up here. Yeah, he was blind drunk. Happens two, three times a month. Yeah, just about. He, he gives us a five spot every time. Come down to the office after dinner and I'll take the rest of your testimony, huh? I'll take them, okay. Sam. She wasn't worth it. Why? Why? Me? <laughs> That's a laugh, you know. I loved her. Your sick kind of love didn't satisfy her. Hogan brought me home. There was someone else here. Who? She pleaded. She begged him to stay. He ran away. Well, describe him. What did he look like? You, me, all the others. Only younger. What are you doing? I'm saving your neck. And mine, too. If the true story ever leaked out, you'd end up in a death cell, and my future would be flushed down the drain. I killed her. No, you didn't. You loved her, remember? You saw a punk running away from here? He killed her! You mean, you're not going to take me in? I won't have to stand trial? I'll give you anything. I'll give you everything. You're giving me nothing. I'm taking it. For years now, I've been trying to get my hands into your pockets. For years, I've been running your dirty errands. I've mopped up your vomit. I've made the people in this town think you're a real man. If it wasn't for me, Marsha would have left you a long time ago. You braided your own noose, Sam. From now on, I'm calling the shots. Uh, I better give myself up. Uh, I killed her. I deserve to die. You're not going to die on me, Sam. You're not going to cheat me. Not when you can give me what I want. You understand? You're not going to see me, Sam. Not now. 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 They'll find out. Not if you do it, I tell you. You came home. You saw this punk running away. You came in, you found Marsha dead. The punk took this. 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 And he took all the money you gave Marsha last night. Just leave everything to me. It'll be all right. You got, you got too much grief in you to talk or say anything. Everything will be all right. Sam, you're going to die of old age. About 30 years old. And around six feet tall, toting a suitcase. To keep an eye open for him in Orville. And notify all the outlying ranches in your area. Right. No, he's out. Uh, last I heard, the sheriff was heading out in your direction. Wristwatch for Mrs. Wilson's purse, didn't you? 
steal anything. What are you trying to do? Yes, you did. Now get in the car. Get in the car. Why, you... Sheriff Elrod. Sheriff Elrod. Call from the Silla Ranch, five miles east of Calab. Prowler, they suspect, is the killer who murdered Marsha Wilson. Investigate. Come in, Sheriff. Sheriff Elrod, established contact. Come in, Max. Come in. You set up roadblocks at Dawson Junction, Addis Point, and five miles west of Orville. Come in, Max. Come in. Carson's reporter's been in three times to get a story about how the suspect got away. What'd you tell him? Nothing. Good. Carson would like nothing better than to have something in print against me. It will shift the Dawson Junction and Adders Point roadblocks, and I'll shift them to here and here. Okay. Sheriff's office. Hmm. The person will call you. Just go out and swear in a dozen more deputies. Yeah. You get some volunteers. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. Welcome to Body Sheriff. You know everybody. Let's have a little, a little toast to the sheriff. Well, if you don't like our party, you know what you can do. You're drunk. Not yet. Stand the silence. Don't get so panicky. Take it easy, will you? Just take it easy. You're out there. You're doing things. You're moving around. You know what I put up with since I saw you last? The undertaker who took Marsha. He gave me a half hour sales pitch on coffins and graves. The ladies auxiliary, Mrs. Matthews and Mrs. Abrams, they all came in here and gave me pies, cakes, preserves. I'm being drowned with sympathy. I'll phone the doc. He'll give you something to put you to sleep. No. To be here alone. All you need is a good night's sleep and leave the booze alone. I'll see you in the morning. Don't go. I got to check the roadblocks. I'll come along with you. I have a feeling that Marsh is still here. Get a hold of yourself, will you? No, I don't think it's strange. If I try to help you find my wife's murderer, please, Max, please. I need to be with people. All right, come on, get your coat. Come on.
we get something to eat around here? Something to drink. Oasis. Is that the only place? That's the best place. The sign says no smoking. Yeah. Now look, you, you, you stop every car and truck going either way. You search them, huh? Open every trunk, and all the trucks you search the trailers completely. You understand? Fill them up. Same. The embalming fluid and the other bottles, is it any better? surprised if Sam Wilson offers a reward. He ain't gonna be satisfied with the guy that killed his wife is hanged. Takes every cent he's got, and he's got plenty. Is this a private party, or can anyone get in on the fun? Well, it's wide open, but it wouldn't be healthy. Jimmy, pay the man. Guys leaving town tonight? Brad, we couldn't find him if he was as big as a house. I'll bring him down with this. I'll smash him to a bloody pulp. Well, I tell you, I'm going to check out on you this time, like I told you before, but for good. You do what I say, you hear me? You're not checking out on me or with me. Now, when we get the reward money, you can have all the things you want. The best food. Fancy hotel. We'll have what we please. Because when you have money, nobody asks questions. Right? All right.
the car. Come on, out of the car. Take it, that means we're back? Yes, it's, it's going to turn into daylight. That was the only place I could see where to cut it. <laughs> You're right. His nightmare hasn't begun because it's not in the sun yet. Right, so we're about to roll into the sun portion of our program. <laughs> so somebody asked about Sammy Davis Jr.'s part. I don't think he was deaf. I think he had earphones in like this generation does all the time. <laughs> no, he was that that was the whole gag. He was deaf. If the guy was going on about his life story and how, you know, he's now well, traveling. Why did he put the, the earpiece in after he was done? Then he could hear him. He said, oh, What? It was a hearing oh, aid? what? Oh, there, let me put this in. <laughs> cool. Kind of like my dad. <laughs> now, now just, you know, I'm not saying anything, but I I might have more screen time than Sammy Davis Jr. on this. Yeah, I think you do. I was surprised he even had a line. I was thinking he wasn't even going to speak. So I was, uh, that was interesting. So, well, but let me get this straight. So the guy gets dropped off in town to continue on the road to another town. I thought he was at the town, but. Now, see, you didn't, you didn't pay attention to what Sammy said. You know, he had know, a few I'm lines, trying. but this is where I get off meaning the highway because now he was going to turn the truck into the desert and go nowhere so he had to get out and and go sleep with the rich man's wife but he didn't Ooh. sleep with the rich man's wife she Excuse? took the nighty from him with those creepy clown dolls what was that all about <laughs> wait 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 let, let let's back up here the hitchhiker didn't sleep with her am the i the only one John that Derrick. What you're just used so to. So they're accusing him of sleeping with her, but he turned her down because he's married. 
He didn't turn her down in the pool. This is a PG movie. She <laughs> slid back down on top of him and they cut. Just because you need it spelled out for you, Ginger. No, the sex scene was supposed to be earlier with I, the sheriff. Uh, I, I think they made Whoopi in the pool. Can I have some feedback from the darlings and dudes here? Yes, because How the whole people... premise is supposed to be he didn't have sex with her. The sheriff was the one having sex with her, and the, they're throw, they're putting the blame on the hitchhiker, right, but he can, he's married. That's why he told just... us to take off the outfit or take it off, whatever. No, nah, because he didn't want to take her back to L.A. He's kind of had a nice swim with her and said, that's fine. I'm now going back. I've now been around the world. What did he, what? Let's see if you're paying attention. What was it he said that he figured out after traveling around the world and- That he and, wanted to get back to his wife in LA. No, 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 no. That's when he went out the door, but he kind of gave advice when he got out of the car. He, that, you know, what did you figure out? I figured out and he said something. All right, I'm, now I'm going to have to actually watch this stupid movie again just to see if you're right. <laughs> right. Well, when you're thinking they didn't even have sex, do we have a count here? How see, Brenda Myrex says, I don't know. She thinks she fell asleep during that part. And uh, how, how Pamela Riley Pavkovich sides with you, but she wants her picture. So that's why she would say that. Oh, she and Tammy agrees. They totally did it in the pool. All right. I bet if there are any dudes on this, they'll agree with me. Because Where's JD? JD needs to pipe up here. He's been paying close attention, especially to the pool scene, I think. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, I have on. to she say, this is impressive. Did, Go ahead. She almost did a Sharon Stone move before Sharon Stone, where she put the leg over him, then she put the leg back, then she slid back into the water. What, do you think she was going for another quarter or something down there? I think she's just a seductress. I think she just wanted a bit. Well, when you looked at her two other choices, I guess John Derrick was a better choice than... Uh, <laughs> Then those other two old men are one had Mike, money, so that was good. But the sheriff, I don't know what his deal was. Yeah, but He's Arthur just kind goes of a on. Mean guy. <laughs> Doesn't Arthur go on and get to go to uh, uh, Willy Wonka? Anyway. Oh, is that where we know him from? Is he Charlie's uncle and Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory? Okay. Yeah, see, now All we'll get these to guys tie are into like that. A million things I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> But see, I thought you'd you'd you would um, you know associate with her or something. Not associate. You would I was going to say her. what? <laughs> she and I. I don't know what it is about those hot, beautiful blonde women in their hot sports cars that makes them look even hotter. I guess, but living in well, that podunk because... town. <laughs> and just so you know, Ginger, I, I couldn't let you drink alone, so I decided to you know, join you here. Well, you do have the fridge right next door, so that's smart thinking. <laughs> And she talked about cowboys, so I guess that tied in, too. How much she loved cowboys. That's why I thought that you might relate to her. Uh -huh. <laughs> but she never found any cowboys, so she was in the wrong part of town. I was oh, just too Jack young. Albertson was in Willy Wonka, so that wasn't Jack Albertson. So, Brenda Mundrack. So, you're wrong about that one, but you're right about the, her getting but, lucky. But it is Brenda. Pool. Brenda is on top of it. She, <laughs> she is. She got the facts checking right there. She did. Uh, Carla Craybaum says, I saw Keenan Wynn in an Elvis movie, Kissing Cousins, I believe. He was in a lot of stuff. And Pamela reminds me that I need to rewatch the pool scene because Darby is right. <laughs> and Pamela says <laughs> she literally left hubby in the dust. <laughs> that is. Are, are you saying there are a few darlings out there that would have gone with John Derrick instead of uh, Arthur there? Um, I don't know. He doesn't like the older uh, smart women. He seems to <laughs> these young hot blondes. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, let's see what other comments. Oh, I was going to comment. I think it's interesting. There's a lot of scenes in this that they didn't really shoot a lot of cover, you know, a lot of coverage. That shot where he's in the bar and the sheriff comes up and he's got the, you know, the shot glasses in front of him and they did all that in one take, which was actually quite impressive. Where, you know, like he knocks it out of his hand and then he brushes them all off the top of the bar. Sure, nobody wanted to reset that too many times, the mess that it made. <laughs> this coming from the editor and the producer side of you and everything. Oh, that was good. One shot, a lot, not, a lot of negative there. Well, that's because they were pros and they knew their lines and they got it right in one take, probably. 
<laughs> and they have the DuPont money behind them. I see. I don't understand that. Why? Uh, you know, why they couldn't go with the bigger budget. And it's Hollywood, right? Because just because the guy has money doesn't mean he wants to sink it all into a movie. <laughs> you should know that What's better than anybody, Darby. <laughs> What, what was he thinking? Come on. Remember, it's a high-risk investment. Not everybody wants to take that high of a risk. <laughs> it's just no adventure left in the world. Uh, Pamela Riley Papkovich says, Arthur O'Connell starred in the second hundred years with Monty Markham. I don't know who Monty Markham is, but maybe you know who he is. Didn't he do something? I thought it... <laughs> See, I think this is the problem. I remember these people like in my dreams or stuff. So then I like, you know, <laughs> did I work with you? Didn't I work really? with you? Do I know you from TV? Do I know you from movies? Do I know you from parties? I don't know. Not too many parties. You were too young. <laughs> oh. No, I started young. <laughs> then I look like a face of somebody that was partying. <laughs> Um, one of the questions that did come up are not questions, but when we were chatting in the chat, there is a spot where it says two. And if you look, it'll either say panelists or you can hit the blue arrow and it'll drop down and say panelists and attendees. So some of your guys' comments are just coming to me and Darby and not to everybody. So people are kind of confused with the comments. So just make sure when you respond to a comment, which the comments are great, so keep them coming, but just make sure it says panelists and attendees so everybody can enjoy the fun. Yeah, I'm having fun in the Q in the comments because in like when he left the door open, that really bothered me. You know, he left the house. <laughs> he had a fine time with her and then he leaves the house and leaves the door wide open. But it's for the dramatic shot that she can walk into it um and here this is for jd here here let me share a screen here am i sharing now no yes yes um there they were asking if he was you know i said he was taller than i was there's <laughs> proof right there <laughs> let's see if he was six we could work out how tall i must have oh well did you ever see any of these people when you grew up and like did you ever cross paths with any of these people and say oh i remember working with you and uh <laughs> actually leslie stevens the, the one stevens the one that directed heroes island i was now that might be a fun one to show one of glenn larson's ones it wasn't on for very oh look at ginger she's getting nervous already yeah what uh it's called the Night fall guy is a glenn larson just yes, saying just say <laughs> And this was too, and it was called Nightman. Um, but, <laughs> but it was, you, you have me going there. Why was I telling you this? Why were I don't know. <laughs> I have to sell you on these. That's why I have to do this now. But anyway, that would be a fun one to uh, show maybe. Heroes Island or whatever that other one. Thank you, Leslie about. Stevens. That, that was my tie-in. So, <laughs> I'm doing Nightman. I'm sitting there with Glenn Larson. The direct, there's another director there, and you know all the brass is there. And this gentleman is sitting there, and he's like, "Hi, Darby. You know, nice to meet you." And I said, "Nice to meet you." And he goes, "Oh no, no, uh, we've met before." I said, "Oh, really?" He goes, "Yeah, we've worked together. You know, don't you remember?" And I usually, we all know, I'm not great with names. I usually try to pull it off. You know, like, "Oh, sure, it was." Blah, 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 blah. But I find, you know what? I'm sorry. He goes, okay, I'll give you a break. I think you were three. But he was the director of Heroes Island. Oh, wow. So. So did you have a nice conversation? Did you tell him you had pictures from that? <laughs> he did tell me a story about his mom. And I don't think Morgan would be able to say yes or no to it. Um, but it would be interesting. But I'm going to save that because I'm hoping that maybe we can have that as a viewing with Morgan. So. We'll Darby's working. That's... We just got to get some yeses here. Okay. Um, Brenda Mudrack wants to know which Fall Guy episode. They were both good with Darby in them. Spaced out. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one you like, huh? Spaced well, out. Well, you know, what's funny is you still look like Israel Boone at that age. You know, you still, you have straight hair and you still, and I also looked at the Magnum one too, but you're not in the Magnum one very much. You're the bad guy, but 
you just kind of keep having angry expressions, but you don't really. <laughs> and that was good acting because it's hard to be in Hawaii getting paid to act and, you know, everything and, and act like you're mean all the time. I did have a run in. I did have a run in with the uh, AD on that one. Cause there was one time I was supposed to do this shot where I come in fast with the car, his Ferrari's parked there. And I'm supposed to come in and tell somebody to get in. The, now I have to watch again to see the scene and tell somebody to get in the car. And I said, the doctor, you know, how do you want me to come in? Well, you know, you're in a rush. I'm, like, I'm okay. So I came in and, like, you know, and stopped it right before the Ferrari yelled to the girl, come on, get in. And so, and, and, and peeled out because due to a lot of the movies I did, they did teach me how to do precision driving and stuff. And I loved it. And boy, as soon as they yelled cut, the AD came tearing over him. If I had wanted a stunt driver, I would have hired one. What do you know? Oh my God, that's a Ferrari and everything. And fortunately the director came over and went, no, 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 that was, that was good. We'll, we'll, we'll leave that stuff, so. So you did do your own, I mean, I know we're getting off topic here, but you did do your own driving in that one? Because yeah. there's another one where you go there at the gas station and you go driving by and stop and then you come back and pull into the gas station. Every now and then, yes, driving, I love to do driving. And, um, you know, high riders that I did, and I got to spend all that time with some of the best stunt drivers around. Unfortunately, we lost one of them in that movie. Uh, they got killed doing one of the stunts. What but, movie? Uh, high riders. High riders. I but don't know I, that one. Are you in that? Yeah, I, I show up in that. I show up in that every now and then. I think I'm just going to um, have to put the highlights of Darby Hinton and we're just going to have a show that's just all your your highlights where you're just like in things for a second and then we <laughs> have you talk about your memories of that moment and then there you go. <laughs> kind of like your well, commercial last want... week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He'll be here all week. <laughs> I should have stuck to the team. But your son's coming over. Uh, Pamela Riley Pavkovich says, awesome pick of you and Aldo Ray. So. Thank you. <laughs> Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> oh, and I wanted to say, I have a friend that hit me. I thought she was hopefully going to join tonight, but I don't think I've seen her. Uh, Josie Pollock, who said Aldo, uh, she was godmother to Aldo's son. And she's a wonderful person uh, that helped me a lot, especially when I was a, a baby born again. Um, and she, her husband was a world renowned mu magician who actually did a guest starring on Daniel Boone. So hopefully I'm going to reconnect with her and maybe oh. we'll do that episode. Cause I remember, kind of remember that was a fun episode. So we they will get back to Daniel. On Daniel Boone. Huh? They had a magician on Daniel Boone. Yes, they did. So we <laughs> will get back to some Boone episodes. I know that'll make Ginger very happy because... I detoured here. See, they oh now see he does have I do have a clip there. Like, oh well. Wardrobe. That made you think of Bolero as you needed your Bolero. Wardrobe. Can we get wardrobe in here, please? I got a little malfunction. Nobody answers. I was gonna say your wife's like, ah, go have another oh, drink. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, let, let me try it. Hon, could you come in here and fix my bow tie for me? Actually, she helped me pin the original one on because it was, but then I saw that it was just a tie and, okay. Back to the movie. Sun, <laughs> the sun is about to come up. All right. So as you all saw, that was Robert Duvall. I think there's a little bit more with him. And then Darby should be coming up probably. Let's see. We have about 45 I'm more minutes. Save the day. Save the day. There we go. You were going to save the day? <laughs> Yes, we have about 45, actually we have less than that. We have 20, 50, about, about 30 something minutes. So Darby should be here in about 15 minutes. <laughs> Trust me, you'll know him when he appears. <laughs> and then we'll be back for our wrap up at the end. But again, keep the chat going on in the um, little chat room. But again, make sure that you switch it to say panelists and attendees so that everybody can see what you're posting. Otherwise it's just me and Darby and that's not yeah. as fun. <laughs> Well, I'm just saying now, it's funner when other people comment. <laughs> well, now you tell me. All right, we'll get. We'll, oh, it's all about fun. you, Darby. It's I'm going now. <laughs> I'm, I'm adjusting my own time going. <sighs> all right, what a diva. <laughs> See you in about 40 minutes.
killer in jail within 24 hours. Just a matter of time. You still think it's the fellow stopped here for a drink, Sheriff? Yeah. You want me to check under the hood? No, I, I'm in a hurry. Next time. You got half the people in town guarding their homes. The other half deputized to help track down the killer. You know, I bet a tank full of premium gas that fellow stopped by here for a drink was no killer. He was a, a young fellow. A lonesome, dog-tired young fellow. Now, you fella. listen to me, Hogan. The last time I was up in state prison, I saw them execute a lunk that had the face of a choir of white for killing a family of five people. You can't go by looks. When you find him, what's going to happen to him? Routine. Just leave it to me. How long? How long what? How long will he get? 10, 20 years, who knows? It depends on the judge. Could he be executed? Might. But he's just a kid. You heard Hogan. Say, a salesman says somebody broke into his truck and stole a case of food down by the Kelbo Road. Do you want to question him? Yeah, yeah, I'll be with you in a minute. All right. Stop worrying, will you? But you heard, Hogan. He's just a young fella. Shut up. We're in this too deep to quit now. Either his head or yours. Mine too, you understand? Yeah. Leave it alone.
what he's doing standing around here. You know he's got to be in his jail someplace. Stand out and pick up his trail. Come on, all the way around. Come on, step it up. What are you two hanging around for? The reward. We found the car, didn't we? There's no reward posted for the car or for the killer either, for that matter. Well, the bartender in the Oasis said, right, the guy in a gas station, the guy that drank the milk. Well, one of them said that Sam Wilson's offering a reward. Why don't you guys beat it? Why? Because you don't belong here, that's why. Get the hell out of here. Beat it! I'm not leaving. I'm getting what's coming to me. Now look, let's go, all right? Don't you tell me let's go. You're not leaving me. 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 Sorry to disturb you, but I, I, I've had an accident down the road with my car. It tipped over. Oh, mercy me. Are you all right? It just, just shook me up a bit. Would you do me a favor and, and, and call my wife in Los Angeles, ask her to pick me up here? Yes. Mm -hmm. the, the number is state 88017. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. Well, come in. Oh, these auto accidents shake you up worse than you know. Uh, what number did you say it was? State 88017. Yes. Yes, well, uh, I'll get a pencil and write it down. We haven't got a telephone, but uh, my husband, Mr. Conrad, goes down to the cafe for some beer about this time of night, and he'll put the call through for you. Oh, you must feel real bad. Come on in. Oh, thank you, Al. You're letting all my warm air out. Come on, come on in. Where are my darn glasses? Now, oh, dear. I don't know where a pencil is. I'll just have to try to remember that number. What did you say it was again? Oh, uh, state 88017. Say, you look as if a nice cup of tea would do you some good. Oh, thank you. I don't want to cause you any trouble. Oh, it's no trouble at all. Now, you just sit right there and make yourself comfortable. down the valleys and shoot at poor little innocent things. Oh, maybe you'll be all right, Dovey. Don't Nobody's worry. Nobody's going to hurt you here. <laughs> Old Gideon took that nasty buckshot out of your wing, didn't he? <laughs> all the animals come around here. They trust us. Yeah, they seem to feel that we're their friends. <laughs> You're going to be all right, baby. Don't worry. In just a few weeks, you'll be flying around here just as good as new. Yes, that's a promise you can bet your tail feathers on. <laughs> Oh, uh, Gideon. Yeah? This young man is in trouble. Are you a hunter? No, no, Gideon, no. He's got an accident. This guy's shaking up a little bit. Now, you just stay right there and rest. Oh, Gideon, um, what was that number now? State 88017. 88017. In Los Angeles. Um, when you go down to the cafe, will you call his wife and tell her that he's here and he's all right? Oh, sure. As soon as I serve supper to my friends. <laughs> Here you are, my good friend. That a boy. That's a boy. Come on, baby. Yeah, Here's something for you too, Harry. Huh? Want to know something? Killing's a sin. 
any kind of killing. Live and let live. People that say that animals are dumb are stupid. They don't make slums, wars. Gideon says that all the animals around here know how to read. And that's why I post those game refuge signs all over the place. Any of the birds or the animals that get in trouble, they come right straight down here. Mm -hmm. Last year we had a real bad drought. And a whole herd of deer came down from the mountains. Spent a whole summer with us. You know why? Because old Mr. Bobcat, he read those signs. And he told Mrs. Hawk. And she told Mr. Buzzard. And he told Squire Eagle. And Squire Eagle flew up on the mountain and told all the deer. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, come on, pussy. Come on, He's the killer. Marshal Wilson. What are you doing here? What do you want? I didn't kill anyone or anything. Dan, look out. He's dangerous. The paper said so. He'll kill us. No, no, no. Please listen to me. I didn't kill anyone. I'm being hunted down for no reason at all. I'm just hurt and tired. I, look, I need help just like they do. Please, please call my wife in Los Angeles. Just ask her to pick me up here. Please. I hope your friends are proud of you. on your windowsill are cool, and the killer stole them. Well, I'll be out first thing in the morning, Mrs. Appleby. Sam Wilson still asleep? Uh, he stepped out a while ago. Stepped out? Sheriff's office. Ho hold on, Hank. Be reasonable. Sam Wilson been here? How long ago? Where'd he go? Sam Wilson? Yeah. Sam Wilson? Uh. Yeah, I've seen him. Come on, I'll show you. up and you start blabbering. Well, I gotta talk to someone. Marsha won't mention it to a soul. Not a word. <laughs> Isn't that right, Marsha? You're drunk, you. No. I'm full of grief and tears and guilt. I want to die, Max. Max, I want to die. She was a slut. I love you. He was a slut! She was a child. My lost child. We put her in that grave. We killed her. You killed her, not we. You killed her! I gotta get the truth out. I can't hide behind lies anymore. I want to face a judge and a jury and get it outside. 
I, I got her, Mac. I, I... All right, all right, all right. You're so anxious to die. Here, go on. Kill yourself. I... Ah! Kill yourself. You're right. She was murdered. She, she got what she deserved. You're right, Max. Yeah, you're Just damn you're right. right. from the all-night truck cafe. How can the killer be in two places at the same but time? But I, I, I told you, I saw him. The, the handcuffs shining in the moonlight. You sure? Yes. No. No. Uh, sometimes uh, my eyes play tricks on me. Johnny's, well, will you take him home? I want to Come on, Dad, let's go. Something really Come on. Yeah, yeah. Sure is hot, huh? Yeah, it's hot. Yeah. You want something? Just looking. Oh, we got everything. You got a phone? Oh, yeah, over there. We got all kinds of phones. I got the uh, American phones. I got uh, French phones. I got wall phones, old-fashioned phones with a crank. You got a real phone? You mean connected? Yeah. Yeah, sure, I got one. But it's going to cost you a quarter for every local call. No, it's all right. Keep it. Keep it. Hey, thanks. Thank you. Hey. Hey, you want a phonograph? No, oh, it's just like new, real good. And real cheap. Come here, take a look at it. Come on, get yourself comfortable. Sit down. Come on, sit down. You said you gotta get started somewhere. Say, uh, about the phone. What phone? I gave you some money to use the phone. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got the right there. There's a phone. Go ahead and use it. I got a picture in the house I wanna show you. Johnny, I'm in a place called Collab. 
<laughs> get in the car and come down here and get me. Oh, Johnny, please listen to me. Listen, Johnny, please. I, I'm in trouble. I'm accused of a murder. I didn't come in. No, Johnny, I didn't. Please listen to me. I have handcuffs on. I need your help. Johnny, for God's sake, will you listen to me? They say, they say the killer stole a thousand bucks from Marsha Wilson before he knocked her off. I didn't kill anybody. Go on, search me. Not so fast. You know, in the junk business, you learn when it's the right time to sell. I'll bet you're real valuable. I'll bet they got a nice fat reward on your hide. <laughs> do myself. Not bad. Not bad at all. Hey, I uh, got a friend inside who needs a little cheering up. We'll take good care of you. Come on in. I think I'll have a little fun myself, as a matter of fact. <laughs> yes, sir. Come on in, girls. We'll have some fun, all right. Hey, Sam, pour us all a drink, will you? Violet Rose is my pal Sam here. Uh, what are you doing? Don't do that. Don't touch anything below enough. Don't touch anything. Get out. Get out. Hang around, girls. Hang around. He'll cool off. He's, he's touchy about the wrong dolls. <laughs> hey there, Sam. Oh, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Sam, will you simmer no, down? He's all right, girl. Just wait a little bit. <laughs> Gentlemen, looks like we're in for a blow. Break camp. Well, an ounce of prevention's worth a pound of cure. On my honor, we'll head back as soon as the blow's over. Go ahead, go ahead.
No, no, no. Build up the battery. Generate some heat. You all right, son? Son, are you all right? I'm all right. Are you in trouble? In a little bit of trouble. Mr. Dawson can help you. Who's Mr. Dawson? The leader of our rock club. How many are there? Four guys. How many kids? Four. And Mr. Dawson, that's all. Uh huh? Okay. You just relax. Go on now, just relax. So it's all right. All right. Suggestions? Fuzzy Wuzzy. Fuzzy Wuzzy, fine. A bee flew into a bakery through the hole where the key should be. Made a bit of bread, a donut, and a bun. And then he took a bite of a baker's son. Fuzzy, 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 fuzzy was his name. He will sting you if he can. Fuzzy, fuzzy. Stay put, man. No move. Is he all right? Yeah, he, yeah he, he's all right. He, he fell. He's got, he's got kind of a bad cut. He, he, he needs help. Here. Are you all right? Uh, He's in trouble, Mr. Dawson. He helped me. I told him you'd help him. I promised. Sure. I'll help him. Mr. Dawson. He went to get you help. I'll take the boy. You stay put. 
Take him down to the dock. You'll find donuts, milk, and a telephone down by the cafe. Go ahead. You broke a promise, Mr. Dawson. You broke a promise. All right, fella. Let's go. Come on. free. He confessed. He killed the sheriff, too. Look, we're sorry. Mistakes happen. Give you a lift? No, thanks. A cup of java? A steak? No, thank you. Where are you heading? And just like that, it's over. The end. <laughs> Credits in the beginning, the end at the end. <laughs> oh, I thought you just cut it off. I'm done with this. I'm out of here. No, that's where it is. <laughs> Come on, simpler times in movies back then. Oh my gosh, that was hysterical. All right, so the Fuzzy Wuzzy song is not the song I know. I knew Fuzzy Wuzzy was a bear. Fuzzy buzz, Fuzzy Wuzzy had no hair. Fuzzy <laughs> wasn't Fuzzy, fuzzy Wuzzy. wuzzy. But I never heard that version, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, you didn't buy the album of the movie, you know. The <laughs> Do you remember There's singing that song? Yeah. Did you have to learn this for this, or did you? Was that a song back then? <laughs> for that crazy town, I guess it was. Boy, those people were all nuts. <laughs> Careful now, my sister lives in the desert and she's well, watching. So do we. JD's accusing Florida and California people of being nuts. So. <laughs> No, California is a semi-arid desert, okay? We're not full desert. We're but we got the Hollywood crowd, so it really <laughs> kind of tips all scales. Now, I did hear that Sammy was supposed to do the music. He was uh, going to do the a song. I think he was supposed to do the opening song. And, and he, en he ended up not doing that. But yes, I do think I had more airtime and dialogue than Sammy <laughs> You did definitely before. did. And I liked I, your stink eye at the end. You really looked mean. 
I don't I know what the academy. What was the academy thinking? Not nominating me. I know it's all crazy, right? <laughs> and you know, I'm I'm just sorry I didn't know when I because I got to meet Sammy and spend a little time with. Oh, I'm did just you sorry watch I didn't. This movie? No, no, later in life. And I'm just oh. sorry I never got to say, hey, you know, we did a movie together. I can, you know, but no. <laughs> so have you never watched this movie until tonight? No. Well, I saw bits and pieces of it when I got it off the, the web, when I saw where the pictures were coming from, because I saw those pictures. And I'm like, I do remember Winsome. And somebody asked, yes, big fans throwing dust in front of the big fans. And it's like, okay, you know, smile at the camera, but don't open your eyes, don't close your mouth. Don't... <laughs> those, those weren't the fun things. I wasn't in the pool with her slanders. That's. Yeah, but who got to blow the horn? Did you get to do the. Arr! The sound guy. Who do you, come on, oh. Ginger, who do you think blew the horn? <laughs> I figured the three boys were all fighting over who got to blow the horn because that was the most exciting part of your job. <laughs> well, and I thought too, you know, when he was drunk and he fell against the horn, I was betting there wasn't a real horn playing there too because the guy left him way too long on the horn. I mean, if you go over and it's making that much noise, you, you know, you pull him back first. So I'm sure that was like a dramatic, let me look at him. Oh, that poor boy. Okay. And of course the Jeep was stationary and they just shook the Jeep when you guys Shh, were driving. Don't, don't ruin the magic. And how well, about- I was the looking to see out the back window and there was no, so they, it's like they clouded up all the windows so it didn't matter. <laughs> and, and how about those motorcycle stunts? Ooh, that had my buddy Jack Gill just green with envy. Oh, when they got stuck in the sand? <laughs> Jack Gill, he went on and did, I was the first guy he ever doubled when he came out to LA from Atlanta. And he's gone on and he is the stunt coordinator for all the Fast and the Furious. And he's a, incredible what that guy can do on a motorcycle. Wow. <laughs> That'd be fun. If anybody, I have never been able to find a movie, okay. It's not a porno, okay? But I have not been able to find a movie I did called Do It in the Dirt. And it was about motorcycle racing. <laughs> Look at you. Ginger, sure. you're well, blushing. Sure, right. You're blushing right now. I love it. No, am I? Whew, it's just because it's hot out here in the desert. Oh, there we go. Yes, yeah, so it was what, called Do It in the Dirt. Do It in the Dark? Oh, in the Dirt. Dirt. Do It in the Dirt. It was a motorcycle one. And sure that's was, super, oh, that, was, <laughs> that was a wild one, but that's where I first met Jack Gill. That was fun. Oh, goodness. All right. Tammy so, uh, says that my local station is playing the really early Daniel Boone episodes lately. I see little kid Kurt Russell in a few. Are you guys buddies? That might make for a hilarious watch party. We've addressed this before. Kurt Russell doesn't do a lot of extraneous. Uh, guest appearances unless he's promoting something he's kind unless of a private guy. Fishing or something like he loves to do now i do have veronica has agreed to come back on and we're ginger didn't think i could make this happen but we're going to play the one or at least one of the ones that got her kicked off the show because you know she was getting much too sexy and and for that and so we're looking because we heard uh, Fabian is still with us and, and kicking and great. So if anybody has any personal contacts to Fabian, uh, it would be fun to reunite uh, Veronica and him. And Veronica has assured me that she's not going for any kind of legal settlements or anything. <laughs> no charges will be brought. She just wants to talk about it. Because um, I guess she was pretty young when, when those uh, that happened. Uh, but that would be fun. So I think we're shooting for that the first month, uh, June, because, you know, we're going to, Veronica is going to be in Kanab with us. And also she has a movie coming out uh, next month. So we can talk about that. So that's going to be a fun one. So that'll make Ginger happy. We're getting back to Daniel Boone. Yes, it is. No more I these am. esotericals out in the desert. I think that was a good movie, though. And what well, fun, once you came on things. the screen, it was fun. But man, those people were all nuts. I tell you, that was crazy. Yeah, <laughs> crazy town. Oh, and I think that's hilarious. So the name of the town was Caleb or Caleb, C A L A B. Did you notice every time they would shoot like sheriff, whatever it was, you could see that it's probably said Calabasas, but they were cutting it off 
just at the B. So it would look like the town was Caleb, but you didn't see the F. <laughs> but the sheriff's, you can see, if you look, you can see it like cuts right at the edge. When they went to the gas station, you could see it was cut right before. <laughs> So they were but saving that money. That was clever. I was going to yeah. say that was clever. Saving money even on the set design. And and that was really Calabasas. How about all that service? You have to pull in, check this, get the oil, get fill me up with gas, everything else. Thank you. That would be four ninety five. I know. <laughs> or when the guy says, "Did you need me to look under the hood?" Here they are on a manhunt. And he goes, "You need me to look under the hood?" And he's like, "No, not this visit." <laughs> it's like <laughs> next time. Next yeah. time you better do it. Because yeah. you know, there's so many people in this town that they. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that was the one. Who is who is the geezer, the town geezer? It's like, oh yeah, I know who that guy is. I mean, everybody in town knew that guy because he's the rich guy and everything else. It was like, oh, oh, oh yeah, I know who that guy is. Okay, and how quickly did they bury her and get a monument up there? But I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Time just flew by in this town. You just well, it is knows. it is the desert, you know. I mean, come on, you got to bury him quick. There's not a lot of ice out in the desert. Maybe it was Twilight Town or something. Who knows? <laughs> uh, good night, Carla Craybaum. She said, "Thank you, Ginger and Darby, for another enjoyable evening. I have to go for now. Take care." Pamela Riley Pavkovich, thank you again, Ginger and Darby, for a wonderful evening. Love you guys. Can't wait for the viewing party. Uh, Pamela also said, yay, can't wait to see Veronica again. And she agrees with me. Oh, hello. These people were nuts. What happened to you? Hello, I'm gone. That's it. <laughs> and your sister Darren thought you were adorable. You got a thumbs up from her. Uh, I told her she was biased. She said no. Yeah. My sister is <laughs> brutally honest. What are you saying she's biased? And happy anniversary, Darren. We were thrilled to be a part of your happenings all over Mexico or wherever you went to celebrate. Out in the so, desert. Out in the desert. So maybe she's nuts too now. <laughs> Delightfully so. All the Hintons are. But that wasn't what your house looked like. All the cage filled with no, buzzards no, 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 and no, no, possums no. and cats. And I mean, you even saw the snake cage I had. I took, you know, a big dresser drawers to make no and i would make aviaries for the hawks and stuff that you could walk in and there was nothing in a little cage like that and they were out a lot more than they probably should have been <laughs> as i've already told a story about the monkey getting into jaja's kitchen and and destroying that and jaja uh, gabor jaja gabor yes like they went next door and <laughs> no, she was about three houses down. She was right up from Quincy Jones. This was up in Bel Air. Uh, but uh, yes, and no, the monkey got in. I had a capuchin monkey. It was adorable. And he literally he had a fun time in her kitchen. <laughs> I mean, I think when she came in, he had the bag of flour under his arm going, yeehaw, and running around. And I guess back then they had tanks. And you would put the glass partitions between the tanks and you put fighting fish in there, which of course is very cruel, but they would see the other fish and they'd always stay up and pretty, you know, with all their, and I guess he pulled some of the glass up so the fighting fish could get at each other. And yeah, she was not a happy Hungarian. I can tell you that. <laughs> but she was like one of mom's really good friends. So, you know, we worked it out. So did she come knocking at your door with the monkey in oh. tow, or did she call you on the, the, I don't know, what was your number compared to SA, whatever that guy was saying, where you picked up the Oh, phone? it was BR, BRO3456. I lived at one, two, <laughs> these aren't any of my passcodes, so I guess I can stay. <laughs> I lived at one, two, three, four Bel Air Road, and my phone number was BRO3456. Now, I would tell that to people and I go, yeah, sure you do, kid. You know, they always thought I was giving them a bogus uh, contact stuff. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, my goodness. All right. So we don't have anything next week, but so when is the next one, did you say? You said in June. I, don't I guess we'll know. have to talk. I know I, I got always to pull do, my calendar up. I always try to do something on Thursdays. Are you going to, don't be dragging you, me into your You mess. got me. Going now. Oh, <laughs> kidding. But I'm kidding, so, Darby. They're so fun to pick on. Okay, so two weeks is June 3rd. Do you think that's when we're Veronica doing Veronica? Okay, that's when we're doing Veronica. So, uh, and again, so, it'll either be the one where she kisses Fabian, or was there a couple episodes with him? Robert in it? Uh, Logan uh, was another one when she. So, um, 
So you're telling me that next Thursday I, I have to do it all on my own. It's okay. Uh, you can call me. You can call me at the last minute. You know I'll jump on there with it. I always love chitty chatting with you, Darby. Who knows what's going on I in the world? I had fun. I had fun. I thank you for doing this. I know it was like, uh, no, Darby, we really should. Yeah, let's. No, Darby, no. But it, come on. It was a good PG movie. I mean, yeah, you guys can't good. even decide whether there was sex in the pool or not. So I have to go back and watch that scene. I still think you're wrong. You can't get more <laughs> PG than that, I'm telling you. Remember, they didn't pay her extra for that, even though John Derrick got his, oh, the sex was supposed to be her and the sheriff. Although I did read somewhere she was supposed to get raped originally, and then they changed it to sex, and then they did the creative thing with the feet and the noises and all that. So, so they could come up with the great one-liner, loved, I got to get used to this, loved by one, sheriff. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure she didn't do anything. She was a nice little girl. Dancing with her clowns in her sheer nighty. I don't know. Anyway, I'm sure my mother's thought, really good impressed. Night. <laughs> anyway, night. have a good night, Darby. Everybody, thanks for being here and uh, be kind to each other. And we will talk to you soon. Stay tuned. Good night.